Hi, welcome to Big Word Bible Studies. This season, um, the fall of 2013, we are going to be journeying through the book of 2 Kings. Last spring, we did 1 Kings. If you missed any of that, feel free to go to the website, tanyadennisbooks.com. Look for the Big Word Bible Studies tab, and there you can find all the study guides for 1 Kings, as well as all of our previous studies. We've actually done quite a number, and so you've got a ton of resources right there. They're all available as free downloads, so go ahead, jump over to the website and you can grab those. This season, however, we're going to be talking about 1 Kings, which is actually a continuation of last season. Some of you may remember that the books of 1 and 2 Samuel and 1 and 2 Kings were originally written as single books. They weren't a first book and a second book. They were one and then divided for the purposes of convenience. Not only were First and Second Samuel one book and First and Second Kings were one book, but the four books together share the same story. So they're almost like episodes of the same um, historical account. So First Samuel runs right into Second Samuel, which runs right into First Kings, which runs right into Second Kings, where we are now. So we're going to be jumping around a little bit to make sure we have the proper historical context that we remember from where we've come and the dates, the um, events detailed in Second Kings cover a period of less than 300 years. However, it's about twice as much time as was covered in First Kings. During this time frame, we are going to meet um, 28 different monarchies. That is That includes 27 kings, one queen, and we will have 17 different prophets prophesying to um, these rulers of the nations, trying to draw them back to God and draw the nation back to God. So as we watch these um, lead the divided king, kingdom into absolute ruin, um, we're also going to meet various leaders of the surrounding nations, such as Moab, Assyria, and Babylon. So the book was written around 550 BC, likely by the prophet Jeremiah, however we're not really sure. Jeremiah did speak to some of these monarchies as a prophet trying to draw them back and trying to um, renew their faith in God. Um, he was one of the latest prophets speaking to these kings, however we don't know exactly who wrote it. That's It's an educated guess and it may be a good guess but it could also be a wrong guess, so we don't know. Um, what we do know is that these are the inerrant words of God to us. So as we look through these words of God, as we study the accounts of these ancient kings of Israel and the history of God's chosen people, um, we can catch on to a couple themes. Now one of these themes continues from First Kings because again they were the same book. We're going to have similar themes carried throughout and this one is everlasting. God is the only king that matters, and his kingdom is the only one that will stand. God is the only king that matters, and his kingdom is the only one that will stand. We had this throughout uh, First Kings as we were learning about the divided kingdom and what happened when Solomon turned his, turned his eyes away from God. And then we're going to continue with this as we go through uh, Second Kings, and we see king after king after king revert to idolatry, and we're going to see how they, um, well, there were a couple small lights. I, I mentioned this in the introduction last week. There were a couple small lights, and um, so we're going to see them try to turn the tide, which brings us to our second theme, that strong leaders who pursue God can turn any idolatrous tide in a remarkable time. These two kings, um, Hezekiah and Josiah, we're going to meet them toward the end of this study. They were rather young. Uh, Josiah was only eight years old when he became the king, but they pursued God. They longed after him, and they followed him wholeheartedly. In Jeremiah, um, there's a verse. I'll, I'll put it up here on the screen for you. There's a verse that tells us that if we follow God wholeheartedly, if we seek him with our whole heart, we will find him. And that's exactly what we learn in this book of Second Kings, that it doesn't take an entire nation to turn to God, but one person can have great effect if they seek God wholeheartedly. And um, he can turn, you know, he can use strong leaders to turn very powerful tides in remarkable time. So if you go on the website, I know I mentioned it before, I'm going to repeat myself here and mention it again. If you go on the website, you can download all the notes that um, I just shared with you. And 
plus some, you'll also be able to download the homework or study guide for our next session. Our next session, we're going to meet in my house on September 26th. Online, it'll be September 27th. We try and meet the second and fourth weeks of each month, so you have plenty of time in between to do all the study questions and, and be prepared to engage in our conversation about these great texts of God's Word. Um, so our next meeting is on September 26th. If you go on the website, you can not only download the study guide for those questions that we'll be going over next time, but you can also download our schedule. La -di -da. Yes, so this is our schedule and the schedule. Um, we try to meet the second and fourth weeks. However, because of where Thanksgiving and Christmas fall this year, we're doing the second and fourth weeks in September and October and then the first and third in November and December. Um, interestingly, because there are five weeks in October, that still works out to be every other week. So it should be okay, but if you get the um, schedule, you can just post it on your fridge or on your iPad or wherever, and then you won't miss a single thing. Okay, so um, yeah, that's what we're doing. I just wanted to give you a quick introduction. Next time we get together, we're really gonna dive into the scripture and see what it is that God has for us there. One last admonition before we go. I mentioned in the introduction that we were going to work on being distinct. I want to read a quote for you. Um, in uh, George Barna's book, Growing True Disciples, he makes um, this statement. After studying 131 different indicators of who we are as people, we concluded that it is difficult for non-Christians to understand Christianity since few born-again individuals model a biblical faith. While there are instances in which believers are different from non-believers, when we compare the two groups, the statistical differences are minimal. To the naked eye, the thoughts and deeds of Christians are virtually undistinguishable from those of non-believers. That's a devastating fact. We have, been, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have eternal life and we have the great helper come and live within us to empower us it is horrible to think that we might have that great power living within us and we're not utilizing it we're not being any different than anybody else so what I want to focus on this term um, as we look through these kings and we see so many of them be so much the same. And then two great ones show up. There are a couple others that do things here and there, but two great ones are going to show up and be completely distinct from all of their predecessors. And I want us to do that. I want us to tap into that power. What is it that they did that created a hugely diverse culture around them? What is it that we can do that can make us stand out as completely different? I want people to look at us and say, to look at me and not say, oh, well, she's different, she's good, she does this, she follows all the rules. No, no, no. I want them to look at me and say, wow, she's different, and I want to know the God that she knows. I want to know the God that empowers her to be so completely distinct from the rest of our culture. And that's what I want for you, too. So I do hope you'll join us on this journey. Come back on September 26th, and uh, I'll have the next... Or, sorry, September 27th, I'll have the next video up. In the meantime, go to tanyadennisbooks.com, check out the Big Word Bible Studies tab, and you can get all of the study guides, all the questions right there, and uh, let me know what you think. Email me, send me uh, some comments on the website, and we can interact that way. If you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to send them to me. It is a great honor to lift you up before our King in prayer. So uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.